Thank you, Rabbi. Good evening, everyone. This year has been quite a year. Lots of ups and downs, lots, lots of loss and founds. You may recall that in mid-March, when the, um, the governor began shutting down the state, at the beginning, um, speaking of loss, I thought I had lost my mind. <laughs> my kids were home from school. I was expected to work full time from home and my husband was still working at the office. My unit at work was focused on developing policies and protocols for our city employees. We're balancing the need to stay healthy, facilitate at-home schooling for their children and keeping their jobs. That meant that both my job as a mom and as a city attorney required me to work 24 seven. And as COVID invaded Philly, we realized at BZBI that we needed to make some difficult decisions. Can we continue in person services? Can we afford to continue to pay our teachers and our staff? If we let them go, how do we provide critical services to our community? Enter the PPP loan, which allowed us to continue to pay our staff. Thanks to God for that. But the application required volumes of documents and the big banks were not moving applications through the queues. We missed the first round of loans, not knowing whether there'd be any more funds, and it was frightening. But luckily our team stayed on top of the application. We waited, we applied. I lost my cool a few times. My children heard words from their mother that were new and unwelcome to them, but we got it. We found money, which meant we didn't lose one staff member. It was such an amazing relief. With this success came what seemed like a setback. BB, BCBI leadership made the collective decision to suspend in-person prayer. Minion, Shabbat services, Shiva, holiday celebrations. What were we gonna do? Where were we gonna turn? The pandemic appeared to be hurting center city Jews in more ways than just the threat of physical affliction. But then we found a way, a way to connect with our community and reach out to our congregants at home. Thank you, Zoom, and thank you, old-fashioned cell phones. Volunteers call, called folks at home to check in. We developed, developed programming based on the talents, expertise, and knowledge of our own congregants, Lena Bazelon, Stephen Freed, Jeremy Bannett. We began hosting Shabbat services this summer. Rabbi Annie and Rabbi Abe were in tune to the latest halakha updates and determined that we could stream services live and enjoy Kiddush together virtually. Over the summer, the loss the nation experienced during the winter and spring, the deaths of Amar Arbery, Breonna Taylor, just to name a few, combined with the death of George Floyd, culminated in protests at City Hall and the destruction of property right down the street from our shul. We could no longer continue to isolate in our own homes and ignore our obligation to recognize the inequalities in this country, to engage in social justice, to educate our children about the differences between our community within Philadelphia and to help repair the world. But the feeling of loss hit me again. Our police department, my client, struggling to protect its citizens and make good decisions, caught on camera exhibiting terrible judgment on more than one occasion. The newly appointed leader of the department stood up and admitted that we're not doing enough had made poor decisions and committed the department to change. This is a commitment that I had not seen before in this city. It was a difficult topic, but heartening to watch and to hear. It was overwhelming, what we had experienced in just a few months during quarantine. And I needed a break. So the four of us, my kids, my husband and I went to Maine and we disconnected from work and reconnected with each other and nature and Jews who were experiencing similar feelings of loss and who were looking for some peace. I found peace and friendship and energy to ensure that upon our return to Philly, I would continue to work together with the community toward improving things in our community. When I got back, BCBI had established a book club to educate and empower our members to learn more about how we got to this place of such inequality and how our perspective may not be consistent with those of our neighbors. We connected with Power, who is working with us to remind our community to register to vote so that our opinions may be heard. We're still stocking up. Volunteers scheduled time to come to the shul to 
prepare meals, meals for our members of our congregation who need us. We're collecting canned goods for food drives because we won't ignore our responsibility to each other. Over the spring and summer, we work to reopen BCBI's early education program. Our director, Sarah Goldfuss, our teachers, Brian Johnson, Joel Chu, returned to the building to prepare for the arrival of the smallest members of our community. And they're here. They're learning to wear masks, socializing with friends, spreading the love, just being kids. Fast forward a little bit to last week. Rosh Hashanah services were magnificent especially for my family who was able to enjoy them in their pajamas. The rabbis, our volunteers, the technical preparation and support, the new carpet all shown from the Bima for all of us at home to enjoy. The amazing task force that engineered this event that is most critical to us at this time. The team, the clergy, they all understand the needs of our community and delivered the goods to us in this moment in, under the most unique of circumstances. To hear the sounds of the shofar all over town and to see friends outside on a beautiful day was such a blessing. There's no mistaking that life is different. We need to continue to be careful. We need to be safe, but we don't need to be alone or afraid or quiet. There are plenty of opportunities at BZBI to help make change, form friendships, continue our education, volunteer to be notorious. And if the right activity or program doesn't exist, help us create it. As my friend Rosalie Kurtz wrote in Econ this week, BCBI is not just a shul, it's a community. I will take it one step further. I think BCBI is a lifeline with the potential to connect with each of us in a way that is personally meaningful. Let's not lose any more time and wait until the pandemic ends to start living, to connect with others, to work toward change, find your outlet, your cause, your voice. May all of you enjoy a sweet new year and an easy fast.